so you want to know whether it would be possible to learn a language in a month, and even better, how. Plenty of people claim to have done it. Some make even bigger claims. 7 days, 6 days, 24 hours, 7 days again, 7 minutes. Learn a language in your sleep. Learning a language I didn't even want to learn. Now among this melee of information, misinformation, clickbait and straight up lies, there is good news and bad news and some more bad news and finally good news, but we'll get to all that. In order to make a good attempt at answering this question, we need to be clear on a few definitions. Firstly, possible. Possible and likely are two very different things. It's possible that with enough training, I could run 10 kilometers in under 40 minutes. Lots of people my age do it all the time. However, it's not likely that I will carry out the necessary training to do so. So possible, very. Likely, no. See the difference? Good. Now to the definition of month. <laughs> Lamont, you joker. Everyone knows a month is 30 days. Yeah, yeah, but actually, no, because it's not. The majority of months are 31 days. Some are 30 and then there's just February. Also, have you considered the relationship between the word moon and the word month? If you haven't, well, you should. This is also where we get the word honeymoon, like the month of honey, I guess, which is a lot more subtle than the Swedish, which calls a honeymoon a caressing month. Yeah, the Swedes don't mess about with this stuff. Anyway, a month. How long is it? It's 40 days. Whoa, 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 whoa. You just mentioned the moon and now you're saying that a month is 12 days longer than the lunar cycle? Yeah, I am. You see, humans aren't actually very good at intuitively sensing time. Measuring it, yeah, we can measure it super accurately sometimes, but actually feeling the length of things, we suck at that. Say your friend leaves for a holiday on July 27th and the next time you see them is on the night of September 4th. That's about a month, right? Yeah, it's about a month in that it's 40 days. Also, I had to check what a month was considered to be before the extra months were added because I assumed that they had to be longer, right? <laughs> no, they were actually lunar months back then, but get this, there were like 70 days of winter that just weren't called anything. Like, okay, sure. So anyway, a month is 40 days long, deal with it. So now we have to answer the much trickier question of just what it means to learn a language. Now I have been a bit cunning when it comes to what a month is, but I'm not going to do that for this part, which is where most people hide the rabbit. Mainly because hiding the rabbit is boring. People say, if you can make yourself understood in a language, then you can speak it. Bye. I can make myself understood in like eight languages and in most languages we could all learn to do this in about three days because it's just not that hard to make yourself understood. Now we're going to come back to this but I'm going to use a much stricter definition of speaking a language. Speaking a language is the ability to, in most situations, have 40% of what you hear and say be comfortably comprehensible for all parties. Put simply, more than 40% of the time, what you're hearing and what you need to say feels comfortable both for you and the people you're speaking to, rather than feeling uncomfortable for one or both of you. This means that even if you happen to be a confident person who's just comfortable sounding like an idiot, what you say still needs to be clear enough that the person you're speaking to is also comfortable. You're allowed to make mistakes, you're allowed to clarify things, but it all counts to your linguistic aggregate. If you're not comfortable saying, how do I say this properly, then you're going to dent your average a lot. But if you just stay silent because you don't have the language to express yourself, then you're not linguistically comfortable in that moment, so that counts as well. If either party is confused for linguistic reasons for six or more of every 10 seconds, you don't speak the language. It's actually quite a high standard. If you don't like my definition, then I don't really care because all definitions of speaking a language are pretty arbitrary, including the CEFR standards, which seem clear when you read them, but when you've actually experienced those levels, you realize that, uh, yeah, if you need to know what this level would be on that scale, we're talking somewhere around B2. But B2 is one big, slightly different colored area in the eternal gray desert that is speaking a language. B1 is actually pretty easy in a bunch of languages and C1 is a whole different ball game that is widely accepted as being well and truly fluent so we're left with B2 and 40 days to get there. So now we have our target and we have our time period. Let's make it simple. And by that I mean overly simple, like simplistic even. A Google search of how many hours it takes to learn a language throws back the result. According to FSE research, it takes around 480 hours of practice to reach basic fluency in all group 1 languages. 480 hours over 40 days is 12 hours a day. Well, that's neat. That's doable. Fair enough. But what's this group one languages jargon? 
Well, it basically means easy languages. These are normally thought of as being languages similar to those you already speak, but as you can see, that's not the only factor. Now, I just want to mention that while a lot of people cite the FSI both on number of hours to learn a language and difficulty of languages for English speakers, it's far from being a holy text because when you check various versions of it, you see that some languages skip around the different groups, some languages are marked with random caveats saying that they're actually a bit harder than their buddies, and even the number of groups has dropped from five to four. Suffice to say, it's a guide and a very rough one at that. There's a whole bunch of important detail that it doesn't go into, and for the sake of brevity, nor will I. Now the bad news is that there are more languages in categories three and four than in categories one and two. So no, you're not going to be fluent in Uzbek 40 days from now. Sorry if I got your hopes up. The good news is that there's a good chance that you're more interested in French, Spanish, Italian, German, and they're a lot easier. I mean, they're still hard, but easier. But the next part is good news, sort of, because there are actually more than 12 hours in a day. Three more, by my count. That's 15 hours a day. It'd be obvious to say 16 because 24 minus 8, but if you're seriously doing this like for real, you're going to need an extra hour's sleep. Ideally, you're having a long sleep at night and a siesta. Or if you're not learning Spanish, a nana nap. And this brings us to the first major obstacle here, which is maximum acceleration. You see, my sneakily adding nine days to the month was even more sneaky than you thought, because everything you try to learn or remember has to fit within a framework. If I tell you that the capital of Scotland is Edinburgh, even if you had believed it to be Glasgow, it's going to be very easy for you to overwrite that with the new information, because you have an existing framework for Scotland, and you've at least heard of Edinburgh, hopefully, so you're just reorganizing things within the framework. But when you start out in a language, you don't have much of a framework. And so generally the most efficient way is to piggyback off a language you already know. But this is still slow and far from ideal. And the upshot is that until you're really quite competent, you're going to learn the language with increasing efficiency the longer you do it for. Which means that assuming you do the proposed 465 hours in the first 31 days, the nine days after that should be as as effective as the first 31, if not more so. So for the first two or three weeks, 15 hours a day is going to be really hard, like just grueling. And the last 19 days, well, no, actually, yeah, equally grueling, just, just horrible and yeah. Which brings us to the question of what you will actually have to do. Here's the part where I justify the outlandish video title by informing the unwashed masses of something that the masses need to hear because they're ignorant in their unwashed massiveness. There's very little difference between knowing a language and speaking a language. Staying on the theme of Scotland, have you ever heard a Scottish person say, I can, where we normal people would say, I know? Well, that finds its roots in Old Norse, where to this day, Scandinavians express knowledge of a language as to can a language. To know, to can, to be able to, to speak, they're thought of as pretty interchangeable in a good number of the world's languages, and with good reason. There's a myth among people who have not seriously learned a foreign language that you can understand the language on a profound level and actually know it very well and even be able to tell if one little thing is out of place because you know it so damn well. But when you go to speak, the little people jump in your mouth and tie up your tongue and you know, there must be some pill that you can take to stop the people tying up your tongue because that's the only problem, right? Wrong. Yes, of course, it can be difficult to clearly articulate your thoughts in any language. I mean, you think these videos write themselves? They don't. Support me on Patreon. But mostly, if you can't find words in a foreign language, it's because you don't know the language well enough. When you spend time learning to know the language, to understand it, predict its patterns, and truly be able to hear when something sounds off, you realize that speaking it is relatively simple. So how do you spend most of the month? learning to know the language. And that brings us to the second major obstacle. See, although at 15 hours a day for 40 days, we'll actually hit an impressive 600 hours of exposure to the language, that's not going to matter as much as how much of that 600 hours you can actually understand. And this is a catch 22. How do you increase your comprehension when you don't yet have any? 
Well, you you cheat, obviously, like I did with my definition of a month. All that you need be concerned with in the first 500 hours is the percentage of the language you understand, even if you are boosting that artificially. We're talking about things like getting a series of conversations or short stories in, let's say, Spanish, and listening to them along with the English translation until you can remember the ideas that were expressed in the whole conversation. And then, listening to and reading along only in Spanish until you've all but memorized the Spanish as well. It might sound unrealistic, but if you were to do this with a hundred conversations that are each a minute long, you'd actually end up with the basics of Spanish nicely solidified in your subconscious. At an average of 10 conversations per day for 50 minutes per conversation, you'd be spending eight and a half hours a day doing this and would complete a hundred conversations in 10 days. In the remaining hours of those first 10 days, you'd do something like repeated listening of audiobooks with which you're already familiar, reading along if possible, and probably some spaced repetition. Oh, and in case you're wondering when you're supposed to eat and, well, yeah, basically just eat, it's while you're listening to the audiobooks. You will need to be exposed to the target language for every waking minute, and no, I don't think that listening in your sleep will make any difference. Your brain will already be furiously processing everything it's being exposed to. So I would at this point say don't overdo it, but, well, it's pretty clear that we're already overdoing it. Now the details of exactly what to do, when and how much to look up words, how much spaced repetition, etc. greatly depend on the language in question and you as a person. So what happens after 10 days? Well, you're only a quarter of the way there, so you'd pretty much just rinse and repeat, except hopefully you'll have access to more complex and longer conversations to do the same thing with. Assuming you've found a suitable audiobook, one that you already know the story of, which contains suitable language, you'll be listening to each chapter 10 to 12 times before moving on. So one book should keep you going for a while. At the end of 20 days, you'll have pretty well internalized 200 conversations, listened to and hopefully read along with a medium-sized audiobook 10 times over, and learned about 500 words in spaced repetition. But you might understand something more like a thousand words, or if the language is close to your own, 2,000 words. And here's where it gets interesting, because sometime around now, you'll hit a sudden spike in comprehension, and the speed at which you learn will greatly increase. And I mean, like, greatly which means a lot. You'll probably also find that what you do at this stage is more intuitive. You'll just know what's effective and what's not, and the micro processes that your brain undertakes in order to decode the language are happening far more frequently and to greater effect. It might be at day 14, it might be at day 27, but a sharp increase in effectiveness will occur. By now you should be able to listen to a normal conversation or audiobook and get at least the gist of what's going on and depending on some of the aforementioned factors, maybe even quite a lot of detail. At this point you just keep doing the same things but with more breadth and less repetition. This time you might be listening to 10 longer conversations 4 or 5 times each and each chapter of a new audiobook just a few times. You're still doing spaced repetition and you're still streaming the language through your eyes and ears or both at all times. And we've reached day 30. Most people's incorrect idea of a full month and you might be wondering when you're actually going to speak. Well, we'll get to that, but think about what you've achieved by this point. The amount of language you've been exposed to is coming pretty close to the FSI's lower figures for basic fluency in a Group 1 language. It's a flawed number for a bunch of reasons, but even if every factor is against you, you've definitely now got some decent ability in a language that was foreign to you just 30 days ago. So now, you'll start to transfer some of that subconscious ability to active ability through speaking, but not speaking to a person. Having a real conversation in which you have to do all the things that you would normally do during a conversation is actually a terrible way to practice because a large amount of your cognition is used up with matters separate to the language. It'd be like trying to learn to hit a baseball while explaining the rules of baseball to someone else. They're entirely different activities and should be practiced separately. Therefore, you're going to instead mimic existing conversations and passages from your target language. What you you choose to practice is up to you, but remembering our 40% comfort rule, the more the situations can reflect your life, the better. It's also best if it's material you've already been exposed to, because that way you're activating subconscious knowledge rather than trying to learn new language. At this stage, you're not going for perfection in accent. You're just priming your brain to the task of taking the language you've fed it and moving your mouth to produce that. To repeat, producing a new language does carry some difficulty, but mostly it's a lack of knowledge and understanding of how the language works 
that stops you from producing it well. This activity should not be all you do from here. In fact, it will only account for about three to four hours a day of the next five days. The rest of the time should be spent on the same things as before. With about five days to go, you've spent almost 20 hours speaking the language aloud over the last week, and that should be starting to feel quite comfortable. You can now also be speaking to yourself in the mirror or on camera. What this does is to make you aware of what you're unable to say, which will help you to listen out for it in your continued immersion, which is still taking up the bulk of your time. You're not going to subconsciously acquire the idiomatic way of saying absolutely everything, but with this much exposure to the language, this act should also help you to become good at thinking of ways to say things so that you're understood. In the last four days, you're going to actually speak to a native speaker for a total of eight hours, two hours a day, in at least eight separate conversations that take place a few hours apart. The reason that you don't do it in longer conversations is that you get significantly better at using the language to converse after each conversation, not during it. I would recommend that at this stage you could even back off the amount that you're immersing. On top of your conversations, you might want to immerse for about six hours of the other 13 hours of every day. And for the remainder, resting. No exposure to any language, even your own. So you've done it. You've arrived at the 40th day, having spent almost 600 hours in a new language, 20 hours producing it aloud, and eight hours actually conversing in it. You may think that this ratio is skewed, but those hours spent speaking the language are many, many times more effective because you waited until you had a tangible knowledge of it. That's why the last nine days are so sneaky. They're not a 30% gain in this experiment. They're more like a 300% gain. So given these extremes, your blatant disregard for everything else in your life and my blatant disregard for the 31 day month, could you genuinely expect to pass the 40% test? Honestly, if you're learning a language that would be in groups one or two for you, then I think it's possible. Speculating, I think some people would pass and some people wouldn't. If we're talking a more clearly foreign language as found in groups three or four, then I doubt it, except for the occasional freak. But doesn't 40% seem a bit low anyway? Remember I said that I think most people could learn to make themselves understood in any language in about three days? That's because making yourself understood by any means necessary has little to do with linguistic skill. We're doing it all the time in our native languages, even though our percentage of linguistic comfort is near 100. So if everything's comfortable 40% of the time, it'll most likely be uncomfortable and clumsy around 58% of the time, and that leaves a very small amount of things that you simply won't have the language for. Earlier I mentioned the grey area that is B2, and I honestly think that most people who actually did this would pass a B2 exam depending on the language in question. Not bad for 40 days. Now we still have two more things to deal with, bad and good. The bad news first. Even if you actually do this, and even in an easy language, that C1 level, the one pretty well accepted as being fluent, that'll take at least this number of hours again. But that brings us to the good news, because this plan I've laid out here, it's actually inefficient. The framework for the language is so loose for the beginning of this plan that almost half the hours you spend in the first 20 days are of little benefit. For the sake of the experiment, it's still better that you're exposed to the language for that time rather than not, but it's actually a shame because you'd probably get 90% of the benefit by doing half as many hours and 70% of the benefit by doing only a quarter. So imagine then that that you were to do this instead for four hours a day for 160 days, the results would be vastly superior because of the increased opportunity for post-practice improvement, rest and recovery, and just more time for you to find and filter resources. You clicked on this video wanting to know how to learn a language in a month, and while it is theoretically possible, it's not realistically achievable. But if you're willing to put the hours in, becoming competent in a language in five months is achievable and a much better idea so you've got two choices. Keep looking for the easy way out. The 20 minutes a day method, the one month method, the one week method, the ones that do not work. Or get started listening to your language today. My name's Lamont. Peace.